You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. I'm recording this in beautiful Puerto Escondido, Mexico, and there are quite a lot of birds in the trees around me here, so uh, there may be a bit of background noise from the birds and from the streets, so sorry about that. This episode is about goals and visions and purpose. How do we identify dreams and work towards following them? How do we change our lives and have direction in life. And I want to talk about this because I think it's relevant for many of the subjects that we cover in the, the voluntary life. Entrepreneurship, personal freedom, really any time that you want to create a better life for yourself, it raises the practical question of sort of how to go about doing that. How do you get that forward direction, that vision? And what are the practical steps that you can take uh, to change your life, really, and to live the life that you want to live. This is something that I think about a lot and that I've done a lot of reading about and, and work on for myself. Um, so I'd like to share with you some of the most useful methods um, that I've found for capturing these goals and visions and purpose and for being able to actually act on them and follow your dreams. Um, So that's what I'm going to talk about today. The perspective that I have found most helpful for this is the perspective from the book Getting Things Done by David Allen. I'm a huge fan of the Getting Things Done or GTD approach to personal productivity and to kind of managing your, your mind, really. And... So I highly recommend that you have a look at that book. I've also done a podcast um, in the Entrepreneurship Series about GTD. And you might want to have a look at that first, or you might want to have a listen to that first. Um, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But in that podcast, I, I kind of give the outline of the getting things done approach. And I talk about how it's helpful to get things out of your head and manage your all of your commitments in actions and projects, next actions, projects, and and so forth. What I'm going to talk about today is an approach to the kind of higher level goal setting, visioning, and purpose that comes from the getting things done approach. And I'll, I'll talk about it in my own words. But in the book, it's described as the horizons of focus. And David Allen talks about how you can think about your life in different horizons of focus. And he provides some different suggestions for each of these horizons of focus. And I'm going to sort of talk through them, uh, in particular, focusing on the higher horizons, the sort of more forward thinking, future oriented ones. So the lowest horizon of focus is really the level of day-to-day actions. And this is really about your to-do list, things that you need to do. Phone this guy, buy that ticket, um, book that appointment, you know, these types of of things that you have on to-do lists. Um, I won't talk so much about that because that's really, that stuff is really vital to get a handle on and can be very overwhelming if you don't have a handle on it. But I'm not going to really talk much more about actions um, today because that's that's more about where you're at now as opposed to visioning in the future. The next level up from that is the level of projects. So the concept here is that whenever you have these actions that you've got to phone someone or buy something or do something specific, those actions are really should all really have a clear project that they belong to. In other words, whenever you have a goal that encompasses doing more than one thing, you've effectively got a project. And again, at the project level, there are lots and lots of useful things that you can do to identify and clearly define your goals and use mind maps and and uh, what's called natural project planning. And 
project planning is a subject really all of its own. Um, but again, I'm not going to focus on that so much today because like, that is still more at the level of where you're at now. The horizon of focus above projects is what David Allen calls your areas of responsibility. And this is a way of thinking about, you know, if you have a specific project, which might be, might be to upgrade your website to a new platform or something, that specific project sits within an area of responsibility and that area of responsibility, it's helpful to define it. And so, for example, if it's a work-oriented one, then, uh, you know, your web, you might have a project to upgrade your website. But the area of responsibility is maybe something called marketing. And that is a kind of broader way of thinking about what it is that you're doing with your life. And the idea there is to identify all your areas of responsibility, both professional and personal. So, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you may have a whole series of responsibilities because typically you've kind of got your your hand in, in everything, but you can still define them in terms of things like sales, marketing, IT system administration, personnel, and, you know, those kinds of things. They're all work areas of responsibility. And you can also have personal ones like, for example, your relationship, your health, your travel and, and holidays and so forth. And the idea there is that by defining these areas of responsibility in your life, you can look at what your goals are for each of those areas of responsibility. And that's where I'm going to talk about the first kind of level of forward planning, which is goals. I see goals as things that you can envisage doing within about the next year. And in general... I see them as things that you can pretty much imagine the way that you're going to get there. Um, you know, you kind of can imagine what it entails. Uh, you need to work out the details, but it's pretty tangible when you make a goal, how you're going to get from here to there. In fact, that's one of the things that makes a good goal. In terms of methods for goal setting, I find it really helpful to look at each of my area of responsibility, both personal and entrepreneurial or professional, if you like, and to look beyond all my existing projects and think, you know, what do I want from this aspect of my life? So, for example, what do I want from my health or my relationship or marketing or sales or IT system admin, whatever it is, and to look beyond the existing projects. And it can be very helpful to do things like mind mapping, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's worth Googling it and looking it up. It's a really useful tool for thinking about this. And to do things like journaling, just writing down everything that comes to mind for you. But what I do is basically in each of my areas of responsibility, I list out all the goals that I'm considering and that I, you know, that I want to achieve. And then what I do if I commit to those goals the way it works for me is I make a project out of it. That for me is when I know that I've got a clear goal that I'm working towards is that I have made it an active project and I've defined that project as something that has a clear outcome. This is what I want to achieve. That's the goal, if you like. And it's also kind of the definition of the project. And I also have a timeline of when I in want to achieve that by. And obviously these things can change and it can be updated and so forth. But that's really what, how I make goals tangible for myself so that they become active projects. And I've been working with that sort of approach for many years and I find it incredibly helpful in terms of my own clarity about what it is I'm trying to do and my own productivity in terms of actually getting things done. The level above that is the level of vision for your life. And David Allen talks about this in terms of where you want to be in five years, where you imagine you know, your business going or your personal life going, where you want to, to be longer term. It took me a long time to really be conscious in my own mind about what makes 
vision so powerful and what's different what the difference between having a vision and having goals is and it's not just that they're looking to further in the future although that tends to be the characteristics as you're talking about five years out rather than within the within the year but the really key thing for me about having visions is it's about allowing yourself to have the courage to dream about something that you have no idea yet how you're going to get there. And there's a great quote by um, Henry David Thoreau where he says, Do not worry if you have built your castles in the air. They are where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. And I think that's a wonderful quote. And what it really says to me is that the thing about visions is if you have the courage to just imagine what you want your life to be about in any particular area. For example, imagine working for yourself. Imagine living in another country or something like that. Even if you have no clue as to how you're going to get to that vision, it gives you a starting point that you can then actually explore and build towards. And I found it to be a really, really powerful exercise to get in, in touch with you know, creating visions for what I, I want my life to be like and where I want to go in my life. I think what stops a lot of people from having dreams and from admitting their dreams to themselves is that they are afraid of admitting a dream if it's still very unclear how on earth that would be um, realized. It's almost by definition impractical, you know. If you think about owning your own business but you've got no clue how you would ever get to that point then it can feel to some people like a very naive or unthought through thing to have as a vision but that's actually the point is to have visions that are beyond what you currently are uh, really clear about how how to to do so you you're by definition you're pushing yourself beyond your boundaries because you're coming up with a vision before you know how to get there. And that really gives you something to work towards. And when, you, when you're able to admit that vision to yourself, you really can find ways to get there. And you will surprise yourself as to you know, how your imagination then kicks in. And if you've got the vision, you can start thinking, oh, well, okay, I want to work for myself. I want to be my own boss. I want to own my own shop. I want to do whatever it is that you want to do. And you start thinking, well, how on earth am I going to get from here to there? Now, I, I'm going to suggest a, a few exercises that I've found very helpful in terms of visioning. One is to create vision boards. And these are essentially just collections of pictures of what something might mean to you. So, for example, um, for each of my areas of responsibility in terms of my relationship, my friendships, in my work life, you know, my writing, podcasting, uh, other entrepreneurial ventures and in, if you own your own business these might be things like marketing IT, personnel whatever it is you can create a, series, a page of pictures for yourself which gives you a sense of the kind of thing that you're dreaming about you know, if you think about your friendships what pictures would represent for you the kinds of friendships that you want to foster and nurture and develop in your life. If you think about your relationship, what pictures would work for you? I do this in Evernote. Um, I found it a useful place that I can just dump things. You might like to do it in your own private journal or whatever, or on paper, a scrapbook, whatever works for you, basically. But it's a very powerful tool. Another tool that I find incredibly powerful is mind maps. This is actually... I, I started using these long before vision boards and I use them for projects as well again have a look up mind maps if you haven't heard of them but they're basically pictures where you draw a, a word in the middle and put a circle around it and then you do a little spider diagram where you link off to what you associate with each of those with, with you know with the thing that you're thinking about so for example if you're thinking about your vision for your home for where you want to live. You might put home in the middle and then you might link off to that and start thinking about 
you know, the type of place that you want to live, the location, the kind of furniture that you might have, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but whatever works for you. Mind maps are incredibly helpful. There's another um, little exercise that I do, which is called Best Possible Self, and it comes from the uh, positive psychology movement. There are a few exercises in that movement that I found quite helpful. And what this is, is you state in positive terms what your life will be like in five years if everything goes perfectly according to your wildest dreams. So you kind of go through each area of your life and you say, in five years regarding my family life, in five years I will be dot, 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 and you finish that. And you can do it for, you know, you can change the time frame, say a couple of years, two years, one year, whatever works for you. But you say for each aspect of your life, for each area of responsibility, if you like, you say for my social life in three years, I will be whatever works for you. And I've found that to be very, very helpful. So that's visions. That's the, the way that you can, you know, have big dreams and make them happen. There is one horizon of focus above the level of vision that David Allen talks about in the book Getting Things Done. And that is the highest horizon of focus that you can have about your life. This is, if you like, your life's work, your deepest core values, the things that are most important to you. And I think that can be the subject of another podcast because uh, it's an important area in itself. So if people are interested in this, I might do a podcast on that one in the future. But I think for today, to make this manageable, I'm going to stop at the level of visions and leave you with that to to think about. So these are some of the ways that I have found it useful to have direction, to have dreams and follow them in life. And I think it's it, this can be a really challenging subject, but it is so, so important and vital to living the fullest and freest life that you can possibly live and making the most of the time that you have. So I really hope that this is helpful for you. I would love to hear any thoughts or feedback that you have or any other perspectives that you have about how you find direction and the best ways that you've found to be visionary about where you want to go in your life and how to follow your dreams. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.